Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Unsupervised Machine Learning, Hidden Markov Models in Python. In this lecture, we are going to go through a theoretical exercise on how an HMM might work for some real-world examples, analyzing the price of a stock and parts of speech tagging. The goal of this exercise is just to get you more comfortable with the variables involved in an HMM and to get you to start thinking about how an HMM might be applied in the real world. Let's start with parts of speech tagging since I think this example is a little easier to understand. If you don't know what parts of speech tagging is, you can think of these as categories of different kinds of words. They tell us how a word is used in a sentence. The eight major parts of speech are noun, pronoun, adjective, adverb, verb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Now, if you're not an expert in grammar, then you probably don't know what all of these mean, but you don't need to. Just keep your basic intuition about language in mind. At the very least, I hope you know what a noun and verb are, since they usually teach this in grade school. A noun is a person, a place, or thing. For example, Einstein is a noun. A verb is an action word. For example, jump, sit, and walk are verbs. The idea behind parts of speech tagging is this. Our observation sequence is just a sentence, like any sentence you might grab from Wikipedia. Our job is to take this sentence and find the corresponding parts of speech tags. The question you might have is, why might this be modeled with an HMM? Well, consider that our language has structure. This structure goes deeper than just the words themselves. In other words, it follows a hidden state sequence model. We might call this grammar. For example, you might say, I walked to the store. This sentence has the parts of speech tags, pronoun, verb, ad position, determiner, and noun. Consider another sentence, Bob drove to the park. This sentence has the parts of speech tags, noun, verb, apposition, determiner, noun. So you can see that these two sentences have very similar structure. The parts of speech tags are nearly identical. Our intuition tells us that the English language follows a set of grammatical rules. For example, you can't switch around these words in any order you like. Let's say you have the sentence, drove Bob the park to. Such a sentence is incomprehensible because it does not follow the rules of grammar. What this means is that there is a hidden structure to language. Now, it's not strictly hidden because we can actually write down the rules of grammar, but it's hidden in the sense that there are billions of web pages online full of text, and we don't have their parts of speech tags readily available. We could hire an expert in English grammar to label them manually, or we could use a latent variable model such as an HMM to do the job for us. To see why a Markov model might be useful here, consider words that have different meanings. Let's take the word milk. Milk can be a noun or a verb, depending on the context. Therefore, you can't classify milk as a noun or a verb without knowing the surrounding words. Consider the sentence, I drank a glass of milk. In this case, milk is a noun. Now consider the sentence, thief intended to milk victims of their life savings. In this case, milk is a verb. As you can see, the classification of milk as a noun or verb would depend on the parts of speech that came before it. And thus, it makes sense for the hidden state sequence to be a Markov model. So if we were to draw out the HMM for a parts of speech tagger, this is what it would look like. The hidden states are the part of speech tags. The Markov assumption is that each part of speech tag depends only on the previous part of speech tag. The emission probability governs the probability of generating each word from our vocabulary given the current part of speech tag. For example, if your part of speech tag is verb, then you might say, run has a probability of 0.01, whereas a basket should have a probability of zero since it is not a verb.
Let's now go to our second example, stock prices. By the way, I chose these two examples because they cover the two kinds of HMMs we're going to talk about in this course. The previous example is an example of a discrete HMM. Words are discrete categorical objects. Stock prices are continuous valued, and so this will be an example of a continuous observation HMM. So why might an HMM be useful for modeling stock prices? Well, we know that stock prices are extremely complex and very hard to predict. But we may have some ideas of the factors that can affect a stock price. For example, if we receive news that a company is releasing a new state-of-the-art high-demand product, we might expect its stock price to go up. Another example I like is Facebook, which has gotten in trouble with the government over its mishandling of data. That caused its stock price to go down. Another example is, let's say Elon Musk makes a weird tweet while intoxicated. That might also make his company's stock price go down. But in general, you might not be able to enumerate all the possible causes of a stock price going up or down. Doing so would be extremely laborious, and even after doing lots of hard work to find all the factors that can affect a stock price, there could still be more that you missed. Therefore, an HMM with latent variables seems to be a good model for this. Let's draw out what this would look like. Again, we have a sequence of hidden states, and again, we make the Markov assumption that each hidden state depends only on the previous hidden state. The emission probability is now a Gaussian rather than a categorical distribution, since the observation is a continuous value. Of course, you could choose other continuous distributions, but the Gaussian is the most common. One important distinction between this example and the parts of speech example is that we know what the parts of speech are. In this example, the hidden states are truly hidden. You can sort of draw an analogy between the hidden states here and the inner nodes of a neural network. In both cases, they are not guaranteed to have any meaning. All right, so to summarize this lecture, we looked at some real-life examples of applications of HMMs. We looked at one example for discrete observations and one example for continuous observations. These were parts of speech tagging and stock price analysis, respectively. We noted that while hidden states can be observed, they don't have to be, and that's what makes HMM so powerful. They can model hidden causes that we don't even know exist or can't feasibly enumerate.